Right. Good morning, guys. Um, welcome to Belfast in Conversation, brought to you by Imagination Limited. Um, joining myself, Owen Quinn. Today is scriptwriter and filmmaker Lawrence Doherty. Hiya, Lawrence. Hello. How are you today? I'm not too bad. How are you, Owen? I'm grand. I'm grand. So, literally, just before I came on, I was I was creating a website for the, the books, The Time Warriors and Zombie Blues, and learning how to do videos, which is taking right. days to do it. But yeah, Loads of YouTube awesome. videos, then? Uh, they're all YouTube videos, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just copying your. Um, yeah. Lawrence, we're both writers, but sort of slightly different. Mm. I'm more yeah. novels, you're script writers. How yeah. did you get into script writing? Um, I I got into script writing several years ago. Um, I've always fancied writing from when I was a young kid. I've just been dabbling with it, you know, like a little short story here and there, but didn't do anything with them. It was just more for myself than anything else. I've always had a little notion about it, um, but around the early 2002, 2003, I started doing extra work here in Northern Ireland. And back then, it was very different. You didn't have agencies. You didn't have the likes of Game of Thrones and all those big shows. It was quite small scale. Um, uh, so I just kind of put the feelers out and started doing a bit of extra work for like the likes of Game of Thrones, Peace and various ads and things like that. And I've been doing that ever since. Um, I've been in loads of things, but through that, watching the process, watching how they put the things together, really gave me a taste for um, writing and directing. So I formed a little collective for extras. The thing about being an extra is, um, as you go from gig to gig, you start to see the same faces, you know, the same friends, and and you, you have a chat and you catch up. And, but you mightn't see them again until the next one, the next film or TV show or whatever, like several months later. So I thought it'd be nice if we could all keep in touch um, in between times. So I just started this little secret Facebook group. It was invite only for a few people I knew, extras. And it was really good. It was really handy. We were able to um, network, help each other out. And I organized little training sessions at taught people how to shoot a bow and arrow, ride a horse, do combat training, things like that. All these things that were really good for their CVs. So we did, we did, I did that for a few years. Then I know, started to notice that the people who were in the extra family, they weren't just extras. They were extras who could write, extras who could compose music, extras who could direct, um, extras who could uh, do makeup and costume and all these other things. So we started making our own little films or little shorts with no budget, just friends coming together and we did that for uh we i made three or four shorts which i wrote co-wrote and directed and um that really gave me a taste for writing and I, you know i've come to the place now where i realize i'm a stronger writer than i am a director and so i've put all my focus into writing now um i was very fortunate to get onto a thing uh that and i screen and i screen are the uh, kind of the body in Northern Ireland that look after funding for all the projects that come through Northern Ireland, everything that's filmed here. So I was very fortunate to make it onto their, what they call their new writers focus um, group, which is where you had to write a feature script and uh, send it in. And they picked three that they would develop for a year. And then one of them got made in the feature film. And uh, the one I was working on with my co-writer Aaron Gibson. Um, it didn't get made. The one that got made was a film called A Bump Along the Way, which uh, was made up in the Northwest. But the thing about this is everything leads on to something else. Through the Extras family and through another collective I formed called, um, I co-founded called Belfast Comedy Writers, you get to know people, you get to meet people. Um, and then one person will lead to another person. So through the new writer's focus, I got to really know the people at NI Screen. I got to start meeting producers. And it's all about forming relationships. And those producers, if they know that you can do the work, they'll trust you with stuff. So at the minute, I, I'm working with two different producers. On One is a, um, a feature film set at Christmas. And the other one is a kind of a thriller like a, a drama, which is, is for TV, six-part drama. So I'm working with two different uh, producers with these at the minute. 
and and they're all going through the NI screen for different funding things like that. So uh, yeah, so like I say, I mean, one door opens another door. But the thing about a writer is, um, as you well know, Owen, rejection is is part of the game. Uh, Three uh, we, rejections we have, this week. <laughs> Three <What> a hat trick. <laughs> You've never, you haven't beat my record. I got four in a week once, um, oh. but the three is pretty bad. Yeah. Um, but the thing about rejection is, it's not. It's something I had to learn the hard way. Is it's not a personal attack on the writer. It's they're basically just saying this is good, but it's not what we're looking at this point. Um, and it's a very subjective thing as well. You could send something in to to whatever. And it just happens to be the person who reads it doesn't like it. It could have been someone else read it the next week and oh. doesn't like it. Yeah, I mean, what do you think about the whole thing about rejections? Uh, I'm not very big on rejection <laughs> in, in general, but um, my journey has been sort of different from yours because you, you seem to have a network. For me, I always want to, I, well, I'll go right back to the start. I always knew I wanted to write. I always yeah. knew then when uh, I wanted to write for Doctor Who, that was my my big goal. Right. But that was the, the mistake because you don't you sort of think that's what I want to write for, but you shouldn't mm -hmm. be thinking about writing for everything. So I, I wrote a story, sent it off, was very good. Wrote them, I drew them the cover for their target book. I was that confident, as you always are, 15, 16. Mm -hmm. And he, mm -hmm. he polite letter back, thanks very much. We don't accept handwritten stuff. So I thought, right. well, the hell with that. Okay, I'm going to write my own series. I'm going to create my own characters. I'm going to create my own adventures. So basically yeah. coming from that direction was, what would I want to see in a book? What would I want yeah. to see on TV? It's always been in my head, the aim for TV and comic books. The comic book thing almost came came to pass twice, four years ago. But it, it, both projects fell through, but the scripts are still there for that. I've actually turned that comic book st strip into my latest book, The Bellbridge Mystery. But for me, it was, yeah, you, you know, it's like you have to write, and it, writing isn't a nine to five thing. No. Um, it's when it takes you. I've seen me sitting up to six o'clock in the morning. Wife hasn't been too happy, but then having to go to work the next day on two hours. Yeah. But it doesn't let you go. It was like similarly yeah. with, with when I started Zombie Blues, that's only out two years, the first one. I was lying in bed one night, couldn't sleep, literally couldn't sleep, had to get up, wrote the first part of Zombie Blues, the first story, because it's an anthology, it's not one novel. It's like you meet all these different zombies and they all mm -hmm. have something to complain about because they're still aware that they're the humans. Um, so you get vegetarian zombie, dog lover zombie. So dog lover <laughs> as a human is completely different than a zombie because you love to eat yeah. dogs. That stuff like that. Kidney transplant zombie, no danger zombie stuff like that yeah and as soon as i wrote it went back to bed it took 40 minutes to write the first one and fell asleep straight away it, it's it's yeah. a bizarre journey it's very solitary because then you have to edit yourself the only thing i can't do is art so i've got yeah. friends that do the covers for me um yeah. people like connor mcmullen um stephen mooney and there was a guy in america called brad bradley um bradley wind so they did the covers, but what I've started now is Connor and Stephen are local people. So yeah. I've always, even when I had the, the original Time Warriors website, which was hacked and deleted, lost everything, there was a lot of yeah. local people. And I've interviewed you for the old website. That's how they yeah. you about your name. Um, that's right. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. It's a very yeah. solitary journey for me. So trying to find... Uh, an agent. There's no agents. Yeah. There's no literary agents in Northern Ireland. There's only one. I, I think mm -hmm. he's retired, Bill Jeffrey. Mm -hmm. um, I asked Owen, well, I asked somebody else, uh, I'm not name names, where would you get an agent? And they just the answer back was find an agent. And I went, well, I know that, but where can you point me to? And I find that my <laughs> world was sort of closed off. It's like nobody wanted to have each other. Mm. Um, so it's for me, it's been awful solitary. Dublin mm -hmm. Comic Con, I've been to them, I was a Heroes and Legends guest as well. So I've done a few conventions, but now obviously with mm -hmm. COVID stuff, that's all out the window. Um, but overall, mine is a much more solitary journey, yeah. and, and it's very frustrating at times. 
and you go yeah. on and trying to learn all the stuff, like just as I was trying to put the videos on the website, yeah. learn how to do it. But literally two minutes before we come on air, to sort of do it. But mm. uh, recently, with thankfully with the, the internet and everything else, there's a few groups come up. So one of them is, and I'm really sorry, guys, if you're listening to this, that I get this name wrong. It's the Irish and British Isle Writing Community. Um, very positive, very welcoming, and very supportive. Um, I find them actually a great help. They give me a list of agents, three of, but those are three that have um, rejected. There's more agents that still have it, but it's only now I'm finding a network of support where it seems mm -hmm. for you as a scriptwriter, you have that with with NI studios and stuff. I, um, but, but then I you took the initiative to create your own network and to support everybody. And that was my idea with the Ten Warriors website to promote people's books actors makeup mm. artists the whole lot especially yeah. because i think it's too i think for the land of saints and scholars we're not yeah. scholarly enough mm. and it just doesn't seem to be any any help every bbc department around the uk has got a script um department where you can go in writers like you and me can go in put scripts in save and get made like play for today and stuff like that no just radio stuff there wasn't one here. And I just find that really bizarre. It was almost as if no matter where you went, it was a, a closed door. More than anything, but you seem to have a lot more open doors. Um, yeah, you're right. You see, I think I, I always admire writers like yourself who are primarily involved in, you know, novels and things like that and, and graphic novels and comics and things, um, you know, printed media and uh, media that ends up on the likes of Kindles and things like that. I have a couple of friends who do the same as you and the amount of self-promotion they have to do and the amount of bit work they have to do to go to this convention and that convention and set up their, their little stalls and all this kind of stuff. And um, it just seems like really, really tough. Um, and sometimes you get very little return on it, you know, so I, I I have great admiration for 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 writers like you. The thing about the thing about the screenwriting for me, from the word go, um, it's a collaboration. Um, you know, from the I mean, I will have an idea. I've often said this to other writers, and, and maybe you'll you'll agree that sometimes the curse of a writer is getting a new idea when you're in the middle of something, and all you want to do then is work on that new idea. Yeah. And the idea you're working on becomes almost secondary because you get all excited about the new one. Yeah. I have I have books full of one line ideas, um, which also almost haunt me. Um, so you know, I just think uh, for me with, with screenwriting, um, it often comes down to I'll have an initial idea, or maybe my co-writer will have an initial an, an initial idea. Um, but from there, it becomes collaboration almost straight away, because obviously, as writers, we can't write for nothing. We have to we have to pay the bills. Oh yeah. You know, we have to we have to earn money like any other profession. And I mean, quite often, all of people come to me and say, "Could you write this and could you write that?" And if I mention money, it's all like, "What?" You know, it's almost like you wouldn't expect a plumber to come to your house and fix your taps for free. You know that kind of way. Yeah. But initially, with, right, when you're trying to get through the door, um, we have to do a lot of stuff for free because we have to try and get our names out there, which is, that's all fine. That's all fair enough. But with screenwriting, you're, you're, you're getting your idea together, but you're also starting to think, well, where can this go? Who can this be attached with? And all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, uh, for me... I, yes, I did have little groups that really helped. Um, I guess because I came from the extra background. Yeah. Uh, I was so used to working with crews and working with other people, and I started to get the, to know the names of the people to talk to. I would observe script supervisors on sets and things. I would observe um, directors. I would see how they interpreted the lines on the, on the page. Sometimes if I had... Um, a featured role, I, I would get what's called sides, which is basically the, oh, the sample of the script that they're filming that day. 
um, all the actors get these things um, called sides. And so that would allow me to, that was the first time I was looking at actual scripts written by other people. Um, and I was able to see how they were formatted and how they got the ideas across and things like that. And then there's loads of scripts online that you can go and look at. BBC mm -hmm. Writers Room is a great resource. And there's websites like uh, Scott Myers' website and ScreenCraft and things like that. So for me, from the word go, it was collaboration. I mean, I've started a couple of novels. I have about three or four novels started in various hard drives all over the house. And they're, all, they're always buzzing in my head. You think, oh, I should yeah. go back yeah. to that one day. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I've written, I guess, about 50,000 words of a sci-fi novel. And it's almost finished. And it's really annoying me because it's like in the last act, you know, all the, all the, all the decks are stacked just for this final act. And I, that, I paused that in 2013 and I've never been back to it because life, my life just went another direction. So, um, yeah, it does, it, it, the stuff that you do and the stuff that I do, they're, they're definitely strengths and weaknesses to both of them. Yeah. Life gets in the way. I think is the, is the best way to describe yeah. it. Because I, I, I have just published the Bellbridge one and, and I have four in development, uh, yeah. which I forgot I was doing. I, I thought I'd only two, but actually a four. So I'm trying to do that, do other stuff, get up for work in the morning, you sort of go, do I have to get up for work in the morning? Can I take a day off? No, you, <laughs> you have to pay the bills, as you say. Yeah. Um, but I just found a, a, a sort of, it's not negativity it's like a barrier here it's like everybody's sort of right. like this is mine and if you ask a question can you point me somewhere no uh, even though, even one of the shops that I asked, that I submitted my work to which is sci-fi and horror shop um, yeah. said my stuff didn't suit their clientele and I sort of what? I just, and do you, do you um, are your books available like through Amazon and stuff like yeah. that? So I ended up going the self-publishing route, yeah. Um, because I I had Jet Bill sent it off to loads and loads of people. The what you get back is vanity contracts, where this right. is really great. It's going to be a success. We love it, but pay me a grand and we'll do it for you. Oh, right. And I said, no, you're all right. Yeah. Cut one, I've got a mortgage to pay, so you're literally. And but you can pay in installments. I says, no, that's that is a mortgage. What I you want me to pay? So no, if I'm sitting up to six o'clock in the morning. And if you're setting up at six o'clock in the morning, the money has to come to you. You don't give the money out just to get your work published. That that just doesn't even make sense. But I unfortunately, think, that's, the way, that's the way it's going. There's no like big advances. Yeah. J.K. Rowling and the like it were very lucky. But if you look at mm -hmm. the books, shelves, and the likes of Tesco and stuff, it's a lot of autobiographies. New mm -hmm. stuff doesn't really seem to be supported here. I, I, maybe it's just the journey I've had, but. It's getting your stuff out there, and you're right. You, you, you use all the, the social media platforms, you self publish, you draw people in, and it is all self promotion. Um, but I mean, mm -hmm. for me, it was science fiction, the Time Warriors. Let's create a new series, character wise. Mm -hmm. For me, it was let's be let's try and be different. So we have a black Belfast girl as one mm -hmm. of the leads. So that not only was it representing us, the local community, it also reflects current times. So Jack's actually the strongest character, out of, for me, the strongest character out of the four of them. Zombie Blues was just something I'd seen on The Walking Dead, the very first, which I fell in love with straight away. Didn't know it was a graphic novel at all. Mm -hmm. Just thought it was a new TV show. So the week girl picking up the bunny in the very first scene, I thought, yeah. why, why would she do that? She's yeah. a zombie. So why is the zombie picking up a cuddly rabbit? I know it's to deflect the audience and, and do that a lot but I just thought and then Morgan's wife going to the house after she came as I thought maybe there's something else going on in the zombie's head and that's where zombie blues come from right um, but it is absolutely right it's all side promotion um, with mm. the network for us by the new group that have actually joined what do you, I guess, What about characters I guess, for you what's that what about characters for you what do you look for in a character what do you um characters um Actually, more and more these days, a character, um, I will give someone a name and I will give the person um, a rough purpose. And the character only really comes alive for me when, until I start writing the story. Yeah. Because it's like anyone, if you met someone 
out in the out in the street. You you, you see them physically. They're they're a blank space until they start talking to you and telling you their story. So characters for me have become more almost as important, if not more important, than whatever the plot is, whatever the the story is, whatever the uh, the incident that kicks everything off is mm. because um, if you do not care about your characters, if you do not cry when they fail or smile when they succeed, then what is the point? Um, I have watched, I'm, I'm starting on a new TV thing uh, soon. Uh, well, I've already started. And I've, in preparation, I've been watching loads and loads of dramas. Um, BBC dramas, ITV dramas, uh, just tons of them. And I've noticed that if I have, if I don't care about the characters within the first episode, then that's a real struggle to finish the show. Um, yeah. I mean, I'll not, I'll not say what show it is, but there's a show at the minute and I'm four episodes into it and I don't care about the characters and there's eight episodes and it's all I can do to bring myself to watch the last four episodes because I just don't care. On the, I've been the same. On the flip side, there's a, there's a show that came on Netflix there called The Queen's Gambit, um, which I raced through seven episodes because the characters were so well defined, so well defined. Um, and of course, the actors do something as well. The actors bring the characters to life. But it's all about character at the minute for me. Um, it re it's really important. It's important in comedy. It's important in drama. It's important in horror. It's important in whatever you're doing, because because there's so much choice right now, and the standard of TV is so high at the moment, um, almost better than film. Um, you have to really stand out to get noticed. Yeah. So we can't just write little vanilla characters and hope the story will carry them along. We can't just write characters that are there to further the plot. We can't just have someone that pops up so someone else can get from A to B. It just doesn't work as well anymore. No. Um, the thing I'm writing with my co-writer at the moment we were just talking about last night, um, we had these characters, but the script went in a different direction. And we realized the characters didn't have as much to do, but we really loved them as characters. And we figured, well, we just have to drop them now. You know, and we spent a long time developing these characters, but the thing is, they don't serve, um, they're not there. Sorry. They don't serve a purpose anymore. Um, so because of that, the uh, the characters won't be as strong as they could have been. They won't have a life in or a journey in the script. So if you're, I mean, not so much for comedy. The rule about comedy is, especially with like sitcoms and things like that and farces, characters start off in an episode. They um, something mad happens to them. Um, they go on a mad, you know, so like some crazy mishap. And as long as your characters finish the episode in roughly the same place, like if it's in porridge, they finish it in back in the cells. If it's in Balti Towers, they finish back in the office, uh, you know, things like that. As long as the characters start and finish in the same place, then that's a sitcom because that's the way it works. You reset at the end of every episode. So it's a new episode, you can start in the same place and off they go again on another madcap adventure. So so that works in that works in comedy. But for me with with uh, with drama, the characters and, and films as well, they have to go on a journey, they have to learn something, they have to be different. If they're not different at the end of the of your story than the start of your story, yeah, then what's the point of the story? Yeah. And I have I've seen lots of dramas where um, that has not been the case. How mm -hmm. they got on screen in the first place, I don't know. Fair play to whoever greenlit it, but uh, it's probably do with it's who you know and luck at the same time. Um, yeah, there is a there is a bit of that, especially if you're especially if you're, if you're a more established writer. Um, but yeah. the thing is, the more established writers tend the quality tends to be there baked in already. It's all you know. The, they don't take their foot off the gas because they've had to fight to get where they were. Yeah. 
they Absolutely. know if they if they just turn in something just for the sake of it, uh, they'll probably get dropped like a hot spot. Mm. But um, and yeah, it is, it's 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 who you know um, to a certain extent. I think at the start for writers, there's a little bit of who you know to try and get you in certain doors. But if you don't have, if you don't deliver the quality, then yeah. um, there's there's okay. plenty more people waiting behind that door to take your place. Yeah, and I think producers are becoming more and more shrewd and more and more discerning. Like I said, because the quality of TV at the moment is is incredible. Mm. For me, uh, when you you're talking about making the characters stand out and be different, for me, my stuff had to be anybody could write a story about monsters coming and eating people from outer space there's no substance to that that's just something you'll see on the sci-fi channel with, with the budget of a tenor but for me it's got to be sci-fi sci-fi with a heart it has to be characters who the reader will identify something with for example michael and one it was a bully kid um jack um for her it's sort of like how many new she's a black girl from Belfast so that should reflect and identify with people now um because you automatically think oh it's an immigrant it's not an immigrant somebody that's come from here they're Irish so identity does not be defined by color and stuff like that uh Tyron is sort of a, a tomboy tech thing a billion a millionaire's daughter but she mur she killed something for the love of somebody as a teenager, it's always sort of hunter. No stuff like that. Even with zombie blues, it's like so. One, as I said, one's a vegetarian, but now it's a zombie who eats meat. Doesn't want to do that. So that's the conflict. The dog lover yeah. loves dogs, but now eats dogs. Um, yeah. It, it's sort of it's fighting the person and hoping that identifies with whoever's going to read it. Now I have to yeah. say. I have been very lucky. It has to be sci-fi with a heart for me, as I said. Um, there's no point in just doing a vampire. It has to be a vampire with the reason. Even the monsters mm -hmm. are there. And the villains, they're not just, oh, they eat flesh or they just, they want the yeah. planet Earth. There's a specific reason and drive behind each one for that to yeah. happen. Because then they're singular rather than layered characters. And even in the villain, and you know the best villains, are people love a good villain. So even if a villain yeah. has a good reason, it's going to identify with people. And that's how I try to stand out. It's like the Mentara. They're, they're, they're giant tarantulas, but they're like centaurs from you know, the Harry Potter centaur. But instead of a horse's body, it's a tarantula. So they, Sorry. I'm afraid to say a spoiler here. So they do eat humans, but there's a very specific reason why they do it. Um, right. And when you get to Bellbridge and you're talking about characters taking a life of their own, this, my stories will change and mm. the journey from first footsteps to tempest for the four main characters none of them start out none of them end up where they began and that was my intention you have to grow over the stories or there's no reason for yeah. them so the story the first yeah. four books actually start off by a 17 short stories i thought that was one book because when I went to write the first one, Wheel of the Banshee, which I still haven't read, that's one of the four, the origin story, mm -hmm. um, I didn't know the characters. I just thought, mm -hmm. okay, I'll write a few short stories, get them into my head so I know where to go, and then I'll be able to go back mm -hmm. to that. But then it kicked off in this 17 p adv adventures. Like, if you think of the first season of a TV show, it's slightly linked, and by the end of the final episode, it all makes sense. But not to the point yeah. where you have to watch every episode to get everything. I think the likes of 24. Yeah. And that was always like, if I miss one, what happened, Jack? Oh, that doesn't make sense to me. So let's do it loose thread yeah. so it all makes sense. And when I mm. formatted it out into the books, the self-publishing, it turned out to be four books. Where, But again, that's a learning curve for me and for every other writer. It's what you have in front of you in your wee computer in your Word document is formatted yeah. completely different. We actually put it on to the likes of um, KDP. It is now. It used to be Create Space. Um, but for me, that's the important thing for me for the stories. It has to make a difference to somebody. So everybody has had unrequited love. People have been bullied. Everybody's lost somebody. Somebody's insecure. There's body confidence, all that sort of thing. So I always say, I actually said this to somebody the other day. Um, mm. 
why is there no overweight superheroes? <laughs> what does that say mm. to the kids? Even at that, and, and there's nobody loves it more than me. But I just thought we should that should be diversifying a bit more. And even with the the last one, Spooklight, I added a transgender character, not because oh let's do it because that's the climate. It actually made yeah. sense to the story because quite a few yeah. you could put somebody in a wheelchair, some any nationality in my stories, but. As I was talking to my friend, he says, until there's a reason for it to happen, there's no point in just adding because it'll be shoehorned in. And then it's not organic. It has to be organic. Yeah. And that's for me, mm. that it's similar to your script writing, but I know exactly mm. what you mean by this, the character thing can kick your story off in a completely different direction or do something that you hadn't planned and you sort of become yeah. controlled by your own characters a wee bit. But yes, that, that's all that sort of another thing. That does happen to me a lot. Uh, if you've written a character well enough, the character will often drag you in a different direction. Um, it happens yeah. quite a bit. Um, you know, you if you when you know, especially when you're writing a script, you will stay with the same um, half dozen dozen characters in your head for years and years. Um, could, could be multiple years. You're just living with these characters, and your script will go through so many different um, versions. But quite often you'll write a scene and you'll have this, and because you've known the character so well at this point, and you think, well, I've got to get this, the, this character to this place and this will happen. But quite often the character will say, no, I, I wouldn't have went. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't go there. I wouldn't do that. Yeah. That's not what I would do. That's, and it's actually quite, it's a, it's a joy when that happens because then you know you've really got this character down. It's not just some kind of token character or you know very yeah. very thinly written um and some of the, some of the stuff i've written has been the better for it because the character went listen you you've set these ground rules for me you can't expect me to do this when you've already said that i don't do this and, and so on and so on and uh, and you, you end up going down little alleyways and lanes that you never thought you would have i'm sure you're the same um it's a real joy when you're sitting with at a, at a computer screen typing away a story and something pops into your head that you never in a million years would have thought of the day before but it's only because the story has brought you to a place where you think well of course I could do this now or wouldn't it be amazing if that happened and then you think to yourself how did that ever even form in my head I would never have thought that in a million years um, so that's, 100%. That, that's a real joy of writing for me the, 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 it's almost like you start on a, when you're writing, you, you start on a road and you look down from the road, you bend off to the left, but you can't see what's beyond that bend. Um, and you just start walking yeah. as the story walks. That happened with me with actually all the time, uh, I'm sorry, but the two that stand out for me was the Volox horror. It was like the Time Warriors, it's the ghost of Jack the Ripper, but it's not really the ghost of Jack the Ripper, I think it is. Um, and I knew in my head they were going to meet the villain in that time period, mm. but not recognize that villain. So how do I disguise that? And it wasn't to the very last yeah. scene I went, I know how to do that. And then it flipped it on its head. Mm. Second one was um, one I'm writing at the minute called Relics. And it's Varen's the lead character. Yeah. So you're looking at his past before, on the home planet. Um, and I up to that point, he, we knew he'd been engaged to a, a, a woman called Krista. And then we find, he, this relic gets found in space and it's from his home planet. It's like a, a, a memory box. If you're going to marry somebody, all your memories and the, the, you know, the good stuff goes into this like memory box thing. And it, they find it drifting in space and it reminds him of his past love. So while I was writing it, mm. I went, hang on, his past love was a man. So he flipped mm. as from not, I don't even want to use the word bisexual because it's not like that. It's like it doesn't matter who you love, you just love that person. Yeah. Um, so those yeah. are two big ones for me that never occurred to me when I was writing them, but they just happened when I was writing them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that happened to me as well. Um, well, it's happened to me loads of times, but just very recently. Myself and uh, I, I write with I write on my own, but I also write with a co-writer called Darren Gibson, um, and uh, we were working on a thing that this this Christmas uh, thing that we're working on, 
Uh, it's called All Wrapped Up. Uh, it's like a Christmas uh, TV um, mm. film. And uh, we, we'd we gotten notes back from our producers and the notes, um, when we were thinking about them, thinking, well, this is going to change quite a hefty bit of the script. And this quite ha this happens quite a lot. Sometimes you have to almost go back to the drawing board with a script, even though we've done so much work with it. Not so much with this one, but we realized that we had to do something radical with the script to go in the direction that the producers wanted us to go in. And we were scratching our heads for a while. Um, but just last night, we had a really long uh, phone conversation and each of us helped each other along the way. Darren says, well, what about this? And I said, well, if that happens, what about this? And so on and so on. Um, and we finally figured out the solution. And the solution for us is better than the previous version. Yeah. But if the producers hadn't um, suggested what they suggested, we would never have gone where we're going in a million years. We just never would have. Um, so I, I really enjoy that organic process where, you know, your end product is quite often 100% different to what your starting yeah. project was. Yeah. So it's a fascinating process, writing, I find. It can be a lonely process, but I find it fascinating as well. Well, funny, I was just going to say that you were talking, you, you, you collaborate with someone. Um, yeah. I've only collaborated once with the Dragons of Azrael. It was it was a, a stage show with giant dragon puppets um, uh -huh. done for it was some Northern Ireland festival thing. Uh, it was the only paid job I ever got from writing, actually. But I, I was limited to 30 minutes, so it was a 30-minute script, and I had to sort of, I was writing it and acting it mm -hmm. out at the same time. Um, and then I was passed back to the, the guy whose idea it was, and he twigged it. But for me, I can't picture me collaborating with anybody because it's sort of, I'm a bit of a control freak, but it's sort of, yeah. I need characters. And I was mm -hmm. saying, the friend of mine, the guy that did the cover, Stephen, it was like, I wish somebody could edit the book for me. It would save me, I could go off and start the rest of them. But because I know it, and I know yeah. what the plan is, because the last book is going to lead into two future books. So I, yeah. it has to be in a certain place for that to happen. And it's really difficult for me to uh, to have somebody else do it. Yeah. Well, it's quite easy for you guys. I think it's different if I was doing the, when I did the comic strip script, which is kind of like a movie script. Um, you have to lay out yeah. panel one, etc., and exteriors and stuff like that. That was more a collaboration with the guys that were at the time going to do it. So I find yeah. that collaboration works, but for the novel, for me, it doesn't work because I'm yeah. the guy with the idea. But I think I think a script editor for um, well for for scripts anyhow for me um, working with uh, producers and script editors. It's an essential part of the job. Um, yeah. I just finished, um, I did a little short with an ice cream called Defrost recently. Um, and I got, uh, that was through a, a scheme that an ice cream do called New Shorts Focus, where, you, where they develop a short for six months and then they'll fund one or two of them. And I was fortunate enough to get funded for it. Um, but the process um, of going through that, again, the, the people I was working with, um, the director and the producers, they all brought ideas to me that I never would have thought of on my own. Yeah. And, and, and the different thing between novels and uh, something, the visual medium like film and TV is, I can't just write in, like a, my short had a, a small enough budget. I mean, I can't just write in... Um, um, a chase in the air between two Spitfires or something like that. Yeah. Because budget-wise, it's a no-go. Aye. So things like that, I have to be careful because I'm writing for something that's going to get filmed one day. So, but whereas with you, you could just write the two planets colliding and it's up to the imagination, you yeah. know, to, to fill in the gaps. Um, so I can see where when you're writing uh, like novels that have to lead on to each other, like a series of novels, but you feel more protective. You feel more, I don't want anyone messing with this because this is my vision. I can see that.
but for us, I guess again, like it goes back, it's it's always a team effort, almost from the word go. Yeah, because you and plus, as you said, you are tied by budget, so you can't yeah. have thousands and millions of monsters coming across the mountain. Well, you could no. have computers, but at the day they were basic filmmaking, so you have to stick mm -hmm. with the bus. Like it's like your house, you get your wages, mm -hmm. and you've got to stick with the wages. You can't go yeah. board with them. Um, That's right. Yeah, it's for you guys. I think it's it's a nicer system. I'm kind of jealous of it because there's many nights I would like a clone or two and just give it out. But but we're very different in how we in novels and scripts are, are actually done. Um, well, I'm, I'm, je I'm jealous of you too because you've got you've actually published novels. <laughs> I think that's amazing. Anyone anyone who actually finishes a book and get, never mind publishing, even finishing a book. Is an incredible achievement because I know it's easy. It's easy to write the first couple of thousand words. Yeah, it kind of fall out of you. Um, but getting that thing finished, tying up all the loose ends, and having a satisfactory conclusion, especially when you're talking about 70, 80, 90 thousand words or whatever it is, that's a, I think that's an amazing achievement. So um, I think. Yeah. I think. Do you know what the payoff for me is? If somebody is getting somebody who wouldn't be into that genre. Mm. Reading it and mm -hmm. loving it, and that yeah. will pay off for me. Yes, it'd be great to be well known and, and just give up work and do this full time, but and I'm sure you're you're kind of the same. You just want that big break, but yeah. for the minute, that's grand that somebody likes it because that is one new person who will tell yeah. everybody else. And it used to be the Mattel ten of their friends. Now it's how many followers they have or on Twitter yeah. or Facebook and stuff. Um, yeah. What can you say about Defrost? Where'd the idea come to that? Well, the idea came from... Um, let me think now. Uh, well, I had an idea years and years ago about a locked-off camera in a kitchen and following two people uh, just looking at the kitchen table and it would take place over the period of a year. Where So you would see the calendar change in the wall, you'd see the seasons change, but the camera never moves away from the table. So you, so you see like a, a mother and um, father and a mother and a daughter coming and going and you have various conversations. And through the course of the story, um, we find out that the mother um, has cancer and then flash forward a month, the mother's not there anymore and the kitchen's full of people at a funeral, stuff like that. And then they all go away and the father and daughter are left on their own to try and figure out how to live without the mother anymore. So that was my original idea, and that was the idea I took to an ice cream and the new shorts focus. But that changed, but that changed radically um, over the six months. Um, I, I got rid of the whole locked off. That was just too gimmicky. Um, so, so Defrost is basically a, it's it's a story of a father and a daughter, um, and we begin with them living very trying to live day to day. Everything's very surface, very practical. Um, but there is a loss there. The mother's not there anymore. The father has bottled it up. The, the daughter has learned how to come to terms with her mum not being there anymore, but the father has really internalised everything. But it explodes out of him every now and again in grief. But he, he tries so much to hide the grief from his daughter. But that, so over the period of the, the 16, 17 minutes of it is, you know, we, we see them um, through, some, through something that happens it all comes ahead, um, and it's their journey to try and find a, find how to be a family again, and and to embrace everything that their mother did for them. Mm. Um, so that was the idea of defrost, and um, I've I've seen it, and I think it looks fantastic. And so at the minute, it's just getting the final bells and whistles done um, by Kaboom our post-production house, and then it'll start doing a run of the festivals. So that's the plan for Defrost. Shorts will do festival runs for about a year or so. Yeah. And then it'll end up it'll end up online or something like that. But the thing about shorts is it's also it helps me as a writer to because I've got any screen funding for this one, um, I can kind of use it as a calling card as well. And it's already led. I mean I'm, I'm working with the the uh, production the producers for Defrost and working with them on a different thing. So 
it's really it's nice that one thing kind of leads to another. Yeah. Mm. For that, for me, so, would be ideal because what their your characters are dealing with, everybody mm. can relate to. So yeah. immediately, that's that. That's what I talk about when I talk about sci-fi with a heart. It's getting mm. that thing that anybody can relate to, and I don't think there's anybody that wouldn't relate to that. So it automatically yeah. you have two reactions. Probably some people wouldn't be able to to watch it, but a lot of people will watch it because they'll be able to learn. Yeah. Something. Because yeah. they're seeing themselves on that screen rather than yeah. the characters. Because and I think that's that's the beauty of good writing. If your audience sees themselves on that screen, then your job as a writer is done. You've done the right thing. Yeah, well, that's it. even even if your character is um, a three headed um, devil dog living on the planet Morag or something. You know, as long as you can relate to it. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Do you know what? I just come into my head, Yoda. <laughs> For some reason. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Lawrence, listen, we'll wrap this up. Um, yeah. It's been brilliant talking to you. Uh, Likewise. I, I know I've interviewed you, but that's the first time I've actually sort of talked sort of face to face. COVID. Yeah. Story. Screen to screen. Um, what advice would you give to any young writer or filmmaker out there right now? For. Well, I'll talk about writers, and the best advice I can give is write, 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 write. Don't wait. Don't try and um, wait for something. Just write every, just keep writing. Um, you have to write every day. Um, you, you'll do, that's the only way you'll learn how to write is just to keep writing. If you want to do scripts, there's loads of scripts examples online. You just type in script example, um, go to writer's room. You can see how they're formatted. Um, watch, I mean, if you're interested in writing horrors, watch horrors. If you're interested in writing comedy, watch comedy. They've been through it. They know how to do it. Um, it's all there. Uh, but you've just got to keep writing. Write every day. It's like a muscle. It's like anything. You've got to develop it. You've got to learn. Um, and take rejection as a badge of honor. Because the first thing I did the first thing I sent in was about six years ago, um, a little sitcom. They, they did the BBC Writers Room, which is a brilliant resource. They did a competition here called Crack Off. That's a terrible name. But um, they, uh, I sent a script and I thought it was the best thing anyone had ever written because I was just full of naivety and uh, Made waffle. Made for Doctor Who, yeah. <laughs> uh, there you go. And it got rejected. And I... I was like a bear with a sore tooth for a month. What do they know that, how, how can they tell a script from the hole in the ground? Thinking I knew better than them, you know, BBC. You know? Um, but that was a really good learning process for me because the best script writers in the world, the most successful directors in the world still get rejected. They still get things turned down. Success is never a guarantee of success. That's what I say to myself because you have to go day to day, you have to go project to project because even if you have a really successful project, even if you won an Oscar or something, the next thing you do could be just rejected um, outright. So um, rejection is part of the game. Look, use it, um, learn from it. Why were you rejected? It's quite often, it's not about you. It's just about your particular thing didn't suit this particular, whatever they were looking for. It's not personal. It's, they, it's yeah. not that they, they don't even know who you really are. You're just a name on a script. It's, and quite often these things have thousands of scripts coming in for them. Um, so I would say, that, that's what I would say, write and learn to take rejection well. Learn, it's a learning tool. Yeah, I agree. I would say the same. It's write as much as you can. Learn yeah. everything. If, if you want to do a website for your stuff, uh, Pinterest, WhatsApp, Instagram, all those things you've got to learn along mm -hmm. with the writing in order to self promote yourself. Um, rejection, yeah, it, it is part of the parcel, but the yeah. way you look at it is one day it'll not be a, a rejection. Hopefully. Mm, that's right. So you just that's right. One. And at the end of the day, um, somebody asked me, why do I not give up after 10 books? Because it's not in me to give up. As yeah. I said, it, 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 it gets me out of bed in the middle of the night and open the laptop and get stuff writing. So, mm. yeah, it's either in you or it's not in you. And exactly. I think you're in the same boat as I am. It's something we have to do. There's no two ways about it. 
exactly. Yeah, yeah. The ideas won't let you go. Yeah, and no hard, no matter how hard it gets, pick yourself up. I picked myself up the other night when I got three rejection. Mm -hmm. uh, you just gotta keep going because there'll be other doors opening, and you just gotta find those doors. Talk to people as well. For me, mm -hmm. I think is talk, ask people for help. Um, yeah. Even if you don't get it, there will be somebody else that will give you that advice. Yeah. Uh, and if, if anyone wants to talk to me, that's fine. The thing about writers is we're, we're, we can be a lonely bunch sometimes and writers love to talk about writing yeah. because we don't have to get them to talk about very much yeah. else. I so, yeah, I mean, if anyone wants to, if anyone, I mean, I'm on Twitter as Doc44, so if anyone wants to drop me a line, feel free. I'm on as Time Warrior 1. That's surprising. There you go. Um, same as Instagram, it's just Owen Quinn and then Facebook. You've got the Time Warriors page and uh, Owen Quinn himself. So there's okay. plenty of bases out there for us to contact each other. Listen, Lawrence, thanks go. very much. No, thank you, Owen. Uh, Fantastic. Really good. I had a good time. That was really good and very informative. So I will be talk talking to you after this anyway, because there's a <laughs> I want to follow up with you. All right, mate. Thank All you right. very much. Take care. Bye-bye.